It's important that you and I stick together. Why? Because today on the Woodwork Experience, we're talking adhesives. We're back over here at the workstation at the Woodwork Experience. The first step you need to do is open up your folio folder. From there, open up your template file. Once you've opened that up, go to File, move down to Save a Copy, and save it as 06 Research of Adhesives. From there, change the title to Research of Adhesives. Follow this up by inserting a table. To do this, go up to the Insert tab, move down to Insert a Table, and create one which is five columns across by two rows deep. It is important to go and select next to the end of your heading. From there, press enter. Then, select the area beneath the research of adhesives heading, as well as the table, and set the font to size 12 calibre. From there, ensure that it's bolded, and check to make sure that it is a black text. Now it's time to add some headings. The first heading which will be added is the table heading. And in this case, it will be for type one to three. Following that, you need to add the table headings for the top row. This is where I recommend that you pause the video, copy the headings down, and then resume this tutorial. Now that you've added the headings in the table, add the headings within the table. This once again can be done by pausing the video and only continuing when you have caught up. This is what the table should look like when it's completed. The first thing you will notice is the photo. It is clean, tidy, and takes up around a third of the column. The second aspect is the comment on the pricing of the glue. Not all glues come in the same amount. However, for comparability, it is important that you select amounts which are as close to each other as possible. Following that, I've discussed the glue's availability. Not all glues are available in your area, so it's important to state where you can find them. The column to the right discusses cure time, which is always broken down into two sections. Working time, which is the amount of time you have to work with the glue prior to it beginning to set. And of course, clamping time, which outlines the recommended clamping period. Beneath that is the title which states the color of the glue. Now this is the color the glue has dried. This is important because you would try to avoid using an adhesive that dries brown if you're using a blonde timber, just like you would try to avoid a blondish glue when using darker timber. This is unless you're using it for a specific purpose. For example, you might have a blonde timber, but use type bond three if it is going to be placed outdoors. The final point for this column is application, and it's just a brief outline of what steps are required to use the adhesive. The column to the right discusses durability, common uses, and cleanup. Durability states what the strength of the glue has been tested to. For example, Type Bond 3 has been rated at 4000 PSI. Additionally, if a glue works well in certain instances, that'd be a great time to mention it. For example, Type Bond 3 is waterproof. Common uses is pretty straightforward and outlines which situations this particular type of glue is commonly used in. Finally, cleanup refers to cleaning up the glue. Now, this is of course whilst the glue is still wet, and a lot of glues dissolve in water. However, others like epoxy require acetone or mineral turpentine. The evaluation section is pretty straightforward, and that's just listing the positives and negatives. To fill this up, it's very important to use the information which is found under the headings in the rest of this table. For example, as positive as I said, it's waterproof, it's very strong, it's quick clamp time, ease of application, ease of cleanup, and can be purchased locally. Whereas the negatives are that it's more expensive and that it has a short-ish working time. The information has come directly from the rest of the table. You've analyzed that information and that's what's easy and great about this evaluation section. The last column is dedicated to suitability and uses on project. Suitability outlines how suitable the adhesive is for the set project. For example, I have stated that Type on 3 is suitable for my project as it is very strong, is easy to clean up, and has an appropriate amount of clamping time. However, I have stated that another glue may be more appropriate to minimize costs as I do not require a waterproof adhesive. Under the heading Uses on Project, I've simply stated that it could be used for any normal joinery. 
Now you understand the table, copy and paste it six more times. But what glue should be considered? Adhesives that you could consider would be Type Bond 1, Type Bond 2, Type Bond 3, Type Bond Extend for those who require longer working times. If you need epoxy to fill dead knots, you could consider the West Systems Epoxy or potentially the Total Boat Epoxy. You could also consider Cyanoacrylate for immediate fastening of timber. Cyanoacrylate is also known as Super Glue or CA Glue. You could consider Selly's PVA, which is the cheaper wood glue option than the type on options. Finally, we are up to the ongoing evaluation. It is important to break the glues down into their uses during this section. For example, main joinery, chips and tear out, and filling of dead knots. Under each one of those headings, you'd have a statement something like this. After completing my research, I've determined that the adhesive qualities I require for my main joinery include a brown cure color, as I plan to use dark timber. A very strong bond, as I will try to minimize the use of mechanical fasteners. Easy application and cleanup are required. It also must be available within my area. Finally, I would like the glue to cost under $25 per 500 mils. Adhesives which are still being considered at this point in time include Type Bond 1 and 2 when used along with a die and Type Bond 3. Now go through and repeat the above statement for each part of your project, that being chips and tear outs and filling any dead knots. If you appreciate the content today, please make sure to like and subscribe and if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of The Woodwork Experience.